Are you the parent of a child who's been diagnosed with a disability? Or you've been told there might be a difficulty or delay in your child's development? Do you feel isolated? Are you hurt? Do you think there's no hope? Well, today I'm going to share strategies on how you can support your child and support yourself also. Welcome to Inspiring Women TV. How you started from being a volunteer and now you're a lord? Yeah, I started yeah. volunteering. I volunteered in um, in a housing uh, co-op actually in Newham, and um, yeah, it taught me an awful lot. And I, I would recommend volunteering for any for everybody really. It's it's a good way in. It's a good way of understanding what's re what really happens in your community and in the world. How has Johnny been from being an air hostess to, to a a a not such a secret millionaire? Before. I know. <laughs> yeah. I think the secret millionaire story is yeah. uh, almost. I won't say an aside, but I think it was just to try and bring out an understanding to people to say mm. what your dreams are like. You know, we can create our world of possibilities. We have the remarkable ability within us. And so it's a different type of product, a more community based product where you can interact with Jamaicans on, in the communities, experience the local cuisine within the communities and, and speak with, with folks and have a truly cultural experience. Welcome to Inspiring Women. This program is part of a series on supporting parents with children with disabilities. But today's program is specifically for parents who are Christians. You may be born again, you may be a believer. Wherever you are, this program is for you. You know, sometimes life shows up challenges that we don't understand. We were not expecting this. It's never happened in our lineage, in our country, in our family. And we believe that when we give our lives to Christ, the Bible says all things become new, all things are passed away, everything becomes new. And so you expect that, as the Bible says, that the path of a just shines brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. So you expect that everything is going to go well. Now I've given my life to Jesus. Or oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, I believe in God. God loves me. The Bible says God loves me, Jesus died for me. And you have that conviction that you're a child of God and everything works together for good. But the challenge is that sometimes life happens, things happen. We don't expect the challenges that we face to happen to us. You've been praying and trusting God for a husband or a wife and you fall in love. You see this handsome man, he's probably rich. He doesn't even have to be rich, but you're happy. You fall in love. He, you know, there's this magical proposal here. He goes down on his knees and asks you to marry him. And wow, you're excited. Or you walk into a room and you see this beautiful girl. And all the guys in the room are looking at her like, yeah, that's the girl. She's so beautiful. But you walk up to her, you know, boy meets girl and girl meets boy. And you go on a date or you pray about it or you're happy and you fall in love and you get married and there's this wonderful celebration you know you know everyone is happy for you all your friends all your family come for this glorious day it's your wedding day and everyone is there really excited and happy oh yeah you've done it you've achieved that you're married wow what a celebration and before you know it you go on this wonderful honeymoon you know, you're at the seaside, the beach, this luxurious hotel. You're, all your dreams are falling into place. And then you're pregnant again. You're happy. Wow. There's a bundle of joy in your household. You're, you have this baby, beautiful baby. But suddenly you realize that, oh, maybe my child is not talking. Or maybe my child is not responding. Or you see other children at this age. They're walking and yours is not, or yours is not speaking. Or you might not even know, you might just be going about happily, like you're going to work, you're going to church, you're serving God faithfully and you don't even know it. But suddenly someone begins to say, um, actually, isn't your child supposed to be talking? Or how many words does a child have? And they're like, oh, he smiles, he babbles. 
or maybe it's your mother-in-law, your mother, or your auntie, someone says, other children at this age do this. They speak, they walk, or they have more than 10 words or more than 50 words. And you're beginning to count, oh, how many words does my child have? And they ask you, when did he speak his first word? And you don't know, or you just remember that, oh, he probably said mom or dad. And that's just about it. How does he ask for food? He grabs me, grabs my hand, takes me to the fridge and begins to point, but doesn't say certain words. And then you're beginning to wonder, okay, is there actually something wrong? Or your child goes to nursery, you found this place, you took so much time in researching the nursery, looking through the reports, Ofsted reports, you had to make sure you know you had the best for your child. And then you go into the nursery, your child starts and settles and they say, oh, he's not talking. You think, oh yeah, he's probably a bit shy or maybe he's getting used to the environment. He's not very comfortable. And so I'll give it a few weeks. My husband's family didn't talk for until they were four years old or five years old or Albert Einstein didn't talk until he was seven years old. So yeah, that's another Albert Einstein in the making. But you begin to notice certain things. And before you know it, you're on the internet and you hear the dreaded word from your doctor. The child has been diagnosed with a disorder or disease and your world comes crashing down. It's hard, it's difficult. When God gave you that child, he didn't give you a child with a disorder or a disability or a difficulty. And you're asking questions. First of all, you don't believe it. This can't happen to you. You're a child of God, you're saved. You believe God is faithful. He has brought you this far. He's not the one who will bring you this far and then lead you into a path that is not destined for you. And you can't reconcile all your hair in what that's hap what's happening around you. And look at your child who was so beautiful at birth, but there's this disability or disorder delay, and you're beginning to trust God. Sometimes people find it difficult to reconcile. They can't believe that it's happening to them. If you're that parent, you're not alone. It is difficult because you can't express it, you can't explain it. And possibly your pastor didn't even preach about it last week or last year or in the seven, last seven years that you've been going to that church. You've never really seen anyone with a disability in your community or, or in your family or if an immigrant in your country. It's not something that we talk about. It's not something that you know, everyone comes for Christmas and you say, hey, there's this child with a disability. It just doesn't happen on your street or on the, your own corner. It's never happened in your lineage. And if you pick up the phone and call your mom, she's probably like, no, it's never happened. And you probably think, okay, maybe it's on my in-law's side. And well, they've said, no, it didn't happen. And so you're used to this life that has been going on well and suddenly, your world comes crashing down. You're not alone. I've met a lot of parents who are going through the same thing. You are not alone. It can be quite isolating or depressing, but you're not alone. You know, in the scripture where Mary and Martha went to Jesus and they said, Jesus, Jesus Lazarus is ill, and he said, oh, he'll come and he didn't show up. You'd have thought, oh, Jesus actually loved, you know, the, the Bible actually wrote that Jesus loved them. So you think, oh yeah, this is a done deal. Well, he didn't show up until Lazarus died. And it might seem inappropriate. What I'm trying to say is not that Jesus is going to wait till your child dies until he intervenes. But what I'm trying to say is God knows the best time to intervene. It might not be on your own time, the time that you think is appropriate. It might not be when you think, but he knows. The Bible says this is for the glory of God. God takes the glory. It might be difficult for you to express it or explain it or tell someone else what you're going through. 
But God knows and he sees and he cares and he understands. I don't need to understand. I've also met a lot of parents who have been affected by this. It's affected their marriage. And it might be a single mom who has to shoulder this res responsibility all by herself. And when you got married, you thought, okay, this is for life. But suddenly this pressure overwhelms you and your partner. And so you're struggling. It's a struggle. You can't even raise up your head. I've seen difficult cases. You know, children who are nonverbal, children who, who can't really express their needs. You're not alone. It's not an abnormality because, like I've said before, who determines who is normal and who determines who is abnormal? We're all unique and special in our own ways. We're all made in God's image and God knows and he cares and is there for you. There are little things you need to do, little steps you need to take. Believe in God. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. This is not the time to give up. This is not the time to bend your head or to bow your head. This is not the time to think that it's not possible. And this applies to every situation that you're facing. God will not give us much more that we can bear. He knows whatever it is that we're going through. Your own challenge might be in the area of your child. It might be in my own finances. It might be someone else's health. The grass sometimes appears to be greener on the other side. But someone is probably doing a lot of watering on that side to make it appear to be greener. So don't compare yourself. Don't be led into comparisons. Don't let people think, oh, my child is doing better. We all want to have that child who is always the first in class, who is a genius, who has done really well. But don't get into competition. The Bible says we should not be like those who are unwise and begin to compare one to another. You don't know what the other person is going through. What you need to do is to see God's hand in prayer. Ask for his hand to rest upon you and your child. You have to be the prayer warrior. You have to be the advocate for your child and for yourself also. Get people around you, like-minded people, people who can support you at this time. When it's difficult and you don't know who to turn to, always trust God. Don't look for advice where people will tell you the wrong things to do or tell you to give up or make you feel little like there's something wrong with you. Don't let anyone tell you that there's anything wrong with you or your child. I believe there's nothing wrong with any child. There might be a situation, but it's just a situation. That's what it is. God knows how to make all things work together for our good. Genesis 42, 36. Jacob exclaimed, You are robbing me of my children. Joseph is gone. Simeon is gone. And now you want to take Benjamin too? Everything is going against me. Jacob's beloved son, Joseph, was taken from him at a young age. And so Jacob was despondent. He thought everything was against him. He was given evidence. He didn't, he didn't just hear, but there was evidence. There was a blood-soaked cloth. The coat of many colors that he gave to him was shown to Jacob. And so he believed that Joseph was dead. It looked as if the world had ended. It had come to an end on that day. Everything was against him. But what happened at the end? We found out that nothing was against him. Everything was working together for his good. And that's why the Bible says, what shall we say to these things? These things, all things. What are the things? Disability, sickness, illness. Some people might even come and tell you it's not of God, you must have sinned, you must have done that, you must have done this, but God knows what is the truth and what is not. Don't let anyone tell you that it's your fault, it's because you have sinned, it's because you have done what is wrong. No one knows. So this is why you need to be in God's hands. And you need to be constantly on your knees and praying. When we come back, I'll just share a few strategies or what you can do at this time. Thank you for staying with us. Welcome back. Today's message is specially for you. 
if you're a parent of a child who's been diagnosed with a disability or speech and language developmental delay, or you might be going through an illness, it might be your parent, it might just be challenges that life throws us each and every one of us. I've come to tell you today that there's hope. Don't give up. It's difficult. Yes, it is. I won't sit here and tell you it's easy or it's going to be perfect. And don't blame yourself. There are little things and strategies you can do to support yourself. But the most important thing is don't be in denial. I know that we believe faith and a lot of people speak faith. And I'm an advocate of believing in God, having faith. But don't also refuse to add work to it. Find out all you can. Positive information. Get good information so that you can make informed decisions. Find out all you can. What is this diagnosis? What is this disability? And how can I support myself? Or how can I support my child better? Surround yourself with a good support network. People who will provide support and knowledge and information. Seek professional advice. If you don't agree with one doctor, then seek a second opinion. Don't consult people who will give you a magic pill or magic wand and tell you everything's going to be okay if I wave my hand and nod my head or exploit you or extort money from you. No, don't do that because that's not going to be a solution. But believe God and believe that he has also empowered you to do what is right. Believe God that he will see you through. He did not say that you don't go through the fire or the flood. You will go through the fire. You will go through the flood. But the difference is that he will be with you. There are challenges that we face that People won't even believe that we're facing those challenges. I'm facing challenges. And you might not even know, I might not even show up my face, but sometimes things are hard. Let's not say that we're, because we're Christians, we'll not be, be truthful to one to another. It's better to be open and honest and say, look, I'm going through this challenge. I need all the help and support I can get. And don't just sit down there and expect that, okay, but be spoken about in your church, because it might not be. So seek advice. Find out people who have gone through those same experiences and over, have overcome and learn what you can learn from them. Glean as much information as you can. Don't just bury your head in the sand. Find all, all information, latest research, what is the government saying, what is God saying. Look for support networks. There are groups of parents and group of you know, survivors who have gone through different things. If it's a dietary change you need to do, some people believe in biomedical intervention. I'm not advocating any kind of intervention, but if, for instance, your child has an allergy and you need to go through the gluten-free dietary rule, why not? If your child needs to, you know, go through the non-dairy um, route, why not? Just seek medical advice and make sure you're doing the right thing. Make sure you don't miss appointments, go for appointments, be sure you're detailed. Speak to the doctors, know what medication your child takes or what medication you need. Stick to the plan, have an action plan. Discuss with your doctors, ask intelligent questions. You are the expert. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't access certain information. It's your child, it's your life. It's your responsibility to know all that you need to know. Seek advice. Be knowledgeable. If it's a child, please, by all means, get on the floor. Interact with your child. Do one-to-one -one interaction. Spend time. Learn nursery rhymes. Ask questions. Find out from your child, oh, how was your day? If it's a child that speaks, depending on the age and stage of development, find out how you can support the child at school, at home. If you need to go to the shops at certain times of the day, do that. But don't let people judge you. If you need to travel, you need to make certain arrangements. This might not be the time to set up a business. You might need to wait. This might not be the time to go on a course. You might need to wait. You know, you need to know what works for you and what works for your own family. What works for me might not work for another person. But make sure you find out what is best for you and your child at that particular time. It might not be good for the next season of your life, but at this time, 
find out, think about it. What should I do now? What can work for my child? Does this work? How does this intervention you know, support my child? How can I do this? How best can I make the changes? If it's dietary, if it's medication, if it's the type of clothing they wear, if it's cotton, they need 100% cotton. If it's non-perfumed wipes you need to need, little things matter and they go a long way. Find out from other parents. Sometimes parents I might even be the right source of information. But of course, seek medical advice. Don't give up. Don't let anyone blame you or tell you it's because you've done something wrong. Just know that God is faithful. He won't give you more than you can bear. And with every temptation or trial that comes, there's a way of escape. So it's for us to rise up and face the challenge. Whatever it is, we have the strength. We have enough power to face it. We have the power to rise above every situation. You might be surprised at that child that has been diagnosed as being autistic or has social communication development or has been called an introvert or has been called names. Might be the next computer nerd or the computer genius that we're all looking forward to in the, in the future. So don't give up. What are the strengths? If they're good at maths, encourage them in their strengths. If they need support in an area of weakness, then by all means, try and access the right kind of support for that child. If, for instance, your child doesn't, try, doesn't like to eat certain kinds of food, don't get into a fight with your child. Find out from another parent what worked and what didn't work. How can I do this differently? How can I introduce this kind of meal? What should I tell my child or what should I tell my partner? Don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid. Don't even be afraid to trust yourself or your instinct. There are things and there are certain information that you might know about your child that another professional might not know. So believe yourself and believe in your ability to rise above every situation. Like, like again, again, I said, and again, it bears repetition. Look for a good support network. If there are benefits in your area that you can access, by all means, do so and use that for intervention for your child. If there are grants, if you have funds, go on the internet and find out if you can access any of this. It doesn't make you less of God's child to face a challenge. I don't think it's perfect for everyone. We all go through challenges, we all go through difficulties. But God's grace is more than sufficient for us. He is able, he has said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So where you are, look for the abundance. It might not come in the way you want. He said he will not ask, we will not ask him for bread and he will give us stone. It might be dressed as stone, it might look like hard work, it might not be the way you expected it, it should be, but really, who has the right to determine what kind of life we all live, or who, right, who has the right to determine what happens next? We all think, oh yeah, we'll, we'll get, get up, get married, go to school, have a job in any order. But well, sometimes life throws up challenges, we have ups and downs every day, it happens on the just and on the just. You might think, oh, it's good for the president. You don't know how many death threats he receives every day. You might think it's good for that millionaire. But you don't know how much pressure he is, for instance, to continue to maintain that lifestyle and continue to pay his salaries for his staff. You might think it's better for the next person. But God's grace is sufficient for us. Let us know that in all of this, God takes the glory. And don't forget, this is for the glory of God. Thank you.